What is F4SE? Is it safe to use and how do you install it? Those are the questions I'm going to answer in this video. Before we start, I would just like to point out that this video is aimed at people who are new to modding and are perhaps a little uncomfortable with the very idea of F4SE. If you are not such a person and you just want to skip straight to the installation process, you are more than welcome to do that. Links will be down below in the description to all of the relevant sections. So having got that out of the way, what is F4SE? Well, F4SE stands for the Fallout 4 Script Extender, and it's a kind of special mod that adds power and extra functionality to other mod makers. It basically lets us do a lot of things we wouldn't otherwise be able to do. If you check a lot of the previous games that had script extenders, games like Skyrim, Fallout New Vegas, Fallout 3, Oblivion, that type of game, you'll see a lot of mods that had extra functionality such as key detection, user interface manipulation, and a host of other things that required the script extender. So many mods actually required the script extender that it became the normal way to play your game if you were modding it on PC. But what distinguishes the script extenders from other mods is that ordinarily mods are loaded by the game when you run it. But with the script extenders, you actually run a script extender loader and that then runs the game for you. And of course, that has people asking the obvious question, is it safe? This is actually a perfectly reasonable question for you to ask, and indeed, it's something I would encourage people to do. You shouldn't run random executables without knowing exactly what you are running. So what I can tell you is, yes, the script extenders are safe. If you download them from the official site, I will leave a link down below. If you download them from there, they will be perfectly safe. The script extender team have been around for a long time, and they are probably the most trusted modding team in the Bethesda modding scene. Now you might be thinking, okay, so it's safe, but won't it affect performance? Won't it make the game a little less stable? And the answer is no, actually quite the opposite. The script extenders have actually been responsible for improvements to stability and performance, either directly via the tool itself for things like Skyrim, where it made the memory a lot more stable and improved performance until Bethesda managed to add some tweaks themselves in a patch, all the way to mods that were made for the script extender in games such as Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3 that improved performance or removed these really annoying visual stutters. The script extender will not harm your performance or stability, and it may even help it. So, how do we install F4SE? Well, there are actually a number of ways of doing this. However, I recommend you follow the steps I show in this video. Now, I do have reasons for that, but I realize some people are probably getting impatient and want to move on. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! If you are curious as to why I suggest this method, I will add a section at the end of this video explaining my reasons. Obviously, the first thing we need to do is download the file itself, and you do this from f4se.silverlot.org. I will leave a link down below. Please do not download this from anywhere else. Only download it from the official site. You're going to want the 7z archive. I'm going to download mine to my desktop. You can download yours to wherever you want. Once the file has downloaded, you're going to need to extract this out either using a tool such as WinRAR or 7-Zip. I will leave some links down below where you can get tools that will do that if you don't already have one. I'm going to use WinRAR, for example, and I'm going to extract to, and I'm going to leave the name as suggested. And I now have a folder with all of the files that I'm going to need. I'm going to open that up. You can now actually delete the archive file if you want. For the next step in the process, you're going to need to know where your Fallout 4 game folder is. It will vary person to person, but mine is on my F drive, a special SSD I've got set aside just for games. And I find it under Steam, Steam Apps, 
common Fallout 4. You will probably find something similar, if not on a different drive. This is your game folder, and you'll know you're in the right place if you can find the fallout4.exe file and the fallout4launcher.exe. Do not worry if the .exe is not there, it's hidden. That is just your operating system hiding known file extensions from you. You'll see an icon with Fallout 4 and the icon with Fallout 4 Launcher. It means you're in the right place. There should also be a folder called Data. If I go across to the folder I downloaded earlier and open it up, I will see data, SRC, which stands for source, and some loose files. What we're going to do at this stage is select custom control map.txt and all the way down. Everything that's in this folder except the subfolders, I'm going to copy and then I'm just going to paste them into my game folder. If you've installed a previous version of the script extender, it will ask you if you wish to overwrite some files. Click yes to all. As you can see, this is a clean installation, so it just copies straight across. Now, believe it or not, you can actually finish this installation by just copying the data folder into the same place, and it will copy the contents of scripts into this particular folder. I do not recommend doing that, but it will work. What we are going to do is set up an installation package for a mod manager. I have a rule that anything that goes in my data folder has to be placed there by a mod manager, a single mod manager. In my case, it is the Nexus mod manager. If you're using a different mod manager, you will just have to adapt this uh, tutorial for that particular tool. So what I'm going to do is right click the data folder. I'm going to add to archive using WinRAR. Again, you can use 7-zip if you want. I'm going to add to archive. I'm going to change the archive name to F4SE scripts. And then it seems to be version 0.03.00 based upon this. You can actually name it whatever you want and then click OK. It will create a nice little RAR file. Let me just cut this and paste it to my desktop just to make things a little neater and then minimize that. I'm now going to open Nexus Mod Manager up and then I'm going to simply click on this drag it across to the mods tab and drop it anywhere and it will add it to Nexus Mod Manager. You can do the same by adding mod from file if you want to do it manually, that's completely up to you. I then click the activate, the install and activate button and the scripts have now been installed. And believe it or not, that's the installation process finished. One thing to note is if you upgrade F4SE at a later date, you will have to disable this and add a new file that you create the exact same way and enable that one instead. So now we need to run our game with Fallout 4 Script Extender enabled. And to do this, I'm going to go back to my game folder. Normally, you would run Fallout 4 via the fallout4.executable or the launcher. In fact, you've probably got an icon on your desktop set up that runs it via Steam. From now on, you're going to have to run the F4SE loader instead. Don't worry, you do not need to open up this folder each and every time. You can right-click, send to desktop, which creates a shortcut go along to the shortcut that it's made and you probably want to rename it to something like F4SE Laun Launcher, something like that, so you know you're launching F4SE and you probably want to change the icon. You can do that pretty easily. Go along If you right click, go along to Properties, Change Icon, click OK and then Hit Browse, it should probably default to wherever you are, which is the Fallout 4 folder for me. If you select the Fallout 4 executable and hit OK, it will use the same icon. I now have F4SE Launcher with a nice icon. 
And from now on, you run your game via that icon. You can remove any other Fallout icons from your desktop if you want, just so you don't accidentally run the version without F4SE. Double click, get into game, pretty much the same way, except you bypass the launcher. Once in menu, if you want to check whether or not the script extender is running, you can do that from the console. Now, if you're using an American keyboard, it is the key next to the one. For foreign keyboards, it can vary. You're going to have to figure out that yourself. Open up the console and type get F4SE version, all one word and hit the return key. And there you can see it says F4SE version 0.3.0. That tells me the executables have been loaded. That does not tell me whether or not I've installed the script correctly, but at least I know I've run it from the right executable. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is pretty much it. You've now got Fallout 4 Script Extender installed. You should be able to run your game and use all of the mods that require F4SE. Now, I did say at the end of this video, I would tell you why I recommend this method. And if you've still hung around to hear this explanation, well done. Curiosity is a great thing. I applaud you for wanting to know the reasons why. Well, it's pretty simple. Doing it the way I do it gives you far more safety with regards other mods potential to ruin F4SE. To show you what I mean, I've created my own little mod, Gophers F4SE Killer Mod. Uh, and basically, it's a mod that includes one of the files that F4SE changes. I'm going to add this to the Nexus Mod Manager and then activate it once I can find it. F -H -G there it is. Right. If I activate this now, I will get this lovely little warning saying data file has already been installed by F4SE scripts 0.3.00. Do I want to activate this mod? At this point, I can go, no, absolutely not. And then uninstall it, run off to this mod author's page and say, excuse me, do you realize you're overwriting F4SE? And if so, why? Because that's pretty damned important. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, if I install it the normal way, what would happen when you activate Gophers F4SE killer mod? Well, you would still get a warning if it detected the file, but it wouldn't tell you it's been installed by a mod because it would not know. It would assume it was one of the vanilla files. And unless you know exactly which scripts are the, the dangerous scripts, the chances are you're not going to remember that it's a Fallout 4 script extender file. You're going to think it's a vanilla file and you're going to click yes. The fact that you get the little warning gives you the information you need to protect your installation to protect your load order. Now, I've only ever discovered two cases where this happened, and in both cases, it was simply a mistake by the mod author who had included a file he shouldn't have included. And indeed, he'd actually included the, the script extender version of the file as well, so it wouldn't have actually broken anything. But Theoretically, if a mod author makes a mistake like this, they could break your script extender installation. And best case scenario, it immediately breaks it and you spot the problem and report it to the mod author. Worst case scenario, it doesn't break anything you've currently got installed, but it does break one of the scripts you're not yet using. Then in a few months time, you install a new mod that requires those changes in that script and they're not there, that mod does not work. No matter what you do, you can't get it working. You wander off to the new mod author's page and tell him his mod sucks, doesn't work, you've tried everything, when in actual fact, it's your installation that's broken because you've overwritten a script extender file. Now, I will admit the scenario I have described is reasonably uncommon, probably has only hit a handful of people, myself included, and you could probably install Script Extender in a variety of ways and never have any trouble. However, why risk it? The way I have shown you to install this really only takes a few seconds longer than just copying everything across, and it gives you that added safety. 
And I'm generally all about trying to make your load order as robust and safe as possible. And that is it for this video. I hope it was useful and I hope you've managed to get Fallout 4 Script Extender successfully installed and are now enjoying a variety of new great mods. I look forward to seeing you on the next video you join me for. And until then, remember as always, have fun. If you're curious as to whether I've covered a mod in one of my videos, feel free to go along to my website, gophersvids.com, and check the search functionality out. Just type the name of the mod you're interested in, open up the settings, and filter by mods only. Click for search, and you will see whether or not I've covered that mod. Click on the mod, and it will also show you any of the videos this mod appears in.